Hello. What do you think of these Cobb LEDs, chip on board? Uh, they're not really board, they're aluminium plate. So what are they? Cop, chip on plate, chip on aluminium, COA, something like that. So these ones are uh, six LEDs in a column. This one's uh, got nine columns. This one's got 18 columns. I think this is 54 LEDs. This is 108 LEDs. This one I can't remember, but it's only got three LEDs per column. This one's actually connected up, so I'll switch it on. Oh, that's a bit bright. Let's bring the voltage down so it doesn't swamp the uh, camera. Yeah, so there are the LEDs uh, lit up. Now, lots of descriptions for these things. Uh, Cobb truck lights, 12 to 24 volts. Uh, this one, you can't see it very well. Um, super bright, lightweight, Cobb truck compartment lights, 12 to 85 volts. Uh, this one just says input voltage current, 12 volts. And the ones in the plastic case here came in this box. Um, and it says input DC 12 to 24 volts. Now, as far as I can tell, they're all good for up to 85 volts. Uh, although I'm not sure I'd run them at 85 volts. But let's just bring this power supply in so you can see the voltage. It's only 8 volts at the moment. Uh, let's wind that up. And when you get to about 12 volts, it stops getting any brighter. But I'm going to wind this all the way up to the maximum that, that this power supply will do, which is, I believe, 38 volts. And what's happening is that there's a little buck converter circuit in, in here. So that's 38 volts and it's completely happy. You've got a switch there so that you can switch it on and off actually on the light. Um, yeah, there's a little buck converter circuit in here with a chip uh, and capacitor, inductor, diode, that sort of stuff. Now I bought these as an alternative to these LED strips which I'm using in my shed. Uh, these are three LEDs in series and then there's a, a resistor which is 390, so that's 39 ohms. And I thought, well these will be better because there are no resistors in the circuit. There's just a voltage limited, current limited uh, buck converter. So they're more flexible because you can put uh, pretty much any voltage into them. They do fade uh, down at under uh, 12 volts. Very similar to these, in fact. If you put less than 12 volts in these, the brightness drops quite quickly. Down to about 8 volts, I think it is. But these ones here with the three LEDs in series are not very tolerant of voltages above 12 volts because the forward voltage of the three LEDs is relatively fixed. It's not completely fixed because the forward voltage changes a little bit with current. And so what you're doing is really putting 12 volts. Um, no, you're putting about three volts because you drop three volts per LED. The remaining three volts goes across the 39 ohm resistor. And that means fairly small changes in voltage. Like if you drop the voltage from 12 volts down to nine volts, um, then you're changing the voltage across the, well, you're reducing the voltage across that resistor to round about zero. It doesn't quite work like that in practice. And that's a massive current change. If you then increase the voltage from 12 volts to 15 volts, again, you get a, a huge current change in that resistor. And so the brightness uh, changes a lot. These are very intolerant of being run at like 14 volts. They do vary quite a bit. Um, and they're also impossible to get out of these bags because this front um, uh, sort of rubbery stuff is very sticky and it sticks to the bag. So really the only way to get these out is to tear the bag completely and uh, destroy it really. So this one, oh, it's all bent. They get bent in the post a bit, but yeah, it's got a very tall buck converter the wires go in through holes in the aluminium, <laughs> which doesn't look brilliant to me. But yeah, that's very tall. And then take another one like this one, and it's much lower profile. So they're using a much lower profile inductor, capacitor, 
diode. Well, the diode's pretty low profile anyway. And this one's got quite tall components. Now, it looks like they sort of 3D print this rubberized wall around the butt converter and then just pour epoxy into there. So that's how they're constructed. But the one with the plastic front cover has no gunk over the circuitry so that we can take a look at um, what it involves. When you buy these, you get a piece of double-sided sticky foam and a set of four screws. And the four screws are completely different in every single set. Some are long and thin and some are short and fat. So they vary wildly, these things. But um, I just wanted to try and get this one out of it. So I suppose I better turn that off. Get this one out of its plastic cover. Yeah, that looks promising. And then um, we can have a look at the circuitry and the chip that makes up that butt converter. So here's the circuit. Um, inductor there, 68 microhenries is that. Um, this chip here is a T power chip. How close can I go in macro? About there, I think. So that's a TP8816A. I'll try and get the data sheet for that. So we've got a resistor capacitor diode here. What's that one? SS210. And this is a 4.7 microfarad. Ah, and that's going to be high voltage, isn't it? Yeah, 100 volts because these things, like I say, are rated for uh, between 12 and 85 volts. So, yeah, let's get the data sheet for that. So here we are, uh, T-Power Semiconductor Company Limited. It's tpower-ic.com. And this is the TP8816A. It's got built-in uh, switching MOSFETs, I think that means. 100 volts. Oh, I'm going to have to see what the headings are. Uh, withstand voltage value. And then operating voltage is 5 volts to 85 volts. 1.5 amps, and I think these are current regulated as well. Uh, I'm not sure what one is and 0.5. Overheating downflow, I guess that means uh, when it overheats, it reduces the current. And it's an ESOP 8, which is like a SOIC, a small outline, but it's got a, a ground pad underneath, which you have to solder down to the board for um, heat dissipation. Let me just look at this 1 and 0.5 thing. Uh, default brightness mode, low. Default brightness mode, high. <laughs> yeah, no idea what that lot is. But I've got a data sheet for this, so let's have a quick look. Right, well, it's all in Chinese, but there are a few numbers which we can see. Like 8 to 100 volts, ESOP 8L. There's a schematic inductor on the output. That's... Um, Buck style, isn't it? Yeah, buck converter style. Um, have, do we have any data about maximum input voltage? Uh, yeah, V in 8 to 100 volts. I led. Uh, oh, the TP8816A is less than 1.8 amps. So let's check this out. Um, 12 volts into my original uh, shed lighting strips, these things. Oh, mustn't short out there. Uh, I'm just going to let this warm up and then I'll put the thermal imaging camera on it and we'll see how hot that gets. Now, of course, we've got the problem here that um, the aluminium backside of this tends to reflect. And so we get some strange... Uh, temperature readings but actually interestingly where there's sort of muck on this you're getting accurate readings or sensible readings so about 36 degrees let's do it from the front okay about 38 degrees so possibly this could get up to about 40 degrees um this original strip light now let's check one of the new buck converter style cob leds Right, switch that on at 12 volts. Uh, yeah, quite bright. Let's let it warm up and then start doing some thermal imaging. What's the hottest part? Looks like it's the inductor at the moment. Is that the hottest part? 
Yeah, I think that's the inductor. Now that's quite quickly got up to 43 degrees. I'll just leave this for a bit, let it get warm. Right, if we look at the back side of it, that's showing 32 degrees. And you can see that as I come down it, look at the big number in the top left there. As I move towards the butt converter end, it's getting hotter and hotter, right up to 33 degrees. And if we look at it from the front, that inductor is very warm, 52 degrees. And then look at the big number, that's the center spot, 38 and move down 34. Oh, 42 in the middle, uh, but that's perhaps where my fingers were. So, I mean, it looks like the temperatures are similar, although actually where the, um, the, the butt converter is, it's quite a bit warmer. So I'm not sure there's much to be gained in terms of running cool. This doesn't really run cool at all. Now, what happens if I increase the voltage to say 24 volts? Let's wind that up, which will mean that the butt converter, I mean, the thing is not getting any brighter, but the butt converter will be working harder. So that's 24 volts. I'll leave it for a minute or so and then get the camera on it again. Has that actually gone cooler with more volts? Because that inductor is now measuring 44 uh, degrees, 45 degrees. Let's wind the voltage up a bit more. Let's take it up to 36 degrees, uh, 36 volts. Just bring that in shot. Can you see all the numbers? No, you can't quite. I'll shove it over. Right, that's 36 volts. No, it's very similar, 45 degrees. But was that hotter at 12 volts? I'll wind it back to 12 volts. Yeah, it seems to be. It's now down to 12 volts and that inductor, I suppose it's on all the time, isn't it? So maybe the current running through the inductor is heating the inductor up. Is it on all the time at a lower voltage? Well, I can't think. But yeah, that's certainly hotter at 12 volts. So maybe it's more efficient. <laughs> that's the ceiling, like, go away. Maybe it's more efficient at higher voltages. I'll stick it back up again. Raising it back up to, well, I suppose a sensible voltage to use for lighting in the shed would be 24 volts, something like that. So 24 volts. And yeah, that's actually cooling down. 49.2, 49. Definitely seems to run cooler with a higher voltage going in. I'm quite surprised. I thought it'd be working harder. Interesting. But maybe there's less current in the inductor. I don't know. I mean, they're certainly nice and bright. Um, probably brighter, actually, than the strip lights that I was using. Uh, they're certainly a lot bluer. Um, those strip lights have a, quite a nice uh, yellow tungsten-y sort of colour. Interestingly, this one, when you put the cover over it, has this sort of um, linear lens arrangement and that does horrible things. Let's see if I can get it to do it. And it's quite hard to see but it sort of goes alternately blue and yellow. No, I'm not capturing that very well on that piece of paper. Oh, you can probably see it there. Yeah, you get sort of yellow stripes and then blue stripes alternating. It's, yeah, it doesn't really help having this cover on, but it does make it much more convenient. Yeah, I can feel that's definitely warming up now. Yeah, 24 volts, 24.2 volts. And we're still getting a hot spot on that inductor at about 48 degrees C. And the remainder of the strip is around about 40 degrees C. But I don't think these are any more efficient than these lights. In, in terms of using a butt converter to not use resistors and therefore not lose heat in resistors, I don't think they've achieved much because they lose heat in the butt converter circuitry. Um, but it does make a more flexible light. You can connect it to either 12 volts or 24 volts or 36 volts or, well, theoretically up to 85 volts. I don't think I'd want to use it up at that voltage, to be honest. 
So what do you think? What would you do? Would you go for the original um, LED strips with three LEDs and a resistor multiple times? Or would you go for one of these uh, buck converter cob aluminium strip uh, lights, which do have the flexibility that you could put uh, pretty much any voltage into it between about 12 and, I don't know, 80 volts. Uh, I do think uh, because of the width of the uh, roofing battens in my shed, I'll probably go for these three LED column variants rather than these big fat wide ones because they don't, the, the um, batten is a bit narrower than these two holes are spaced so it's not going to work too well in the shed. But yeah, it's interesting. Um, maybe if I go for a 24 volt distribution of uh, voltage in the shed. Of course, the other thing is when I'm using sodium ion batteries, uh, they vary between 16 volts and 8 volts. Now, 8 volts, as you can see here, that's 8.2. You just get a tiny, uh, not very bright dot. So these really do need to be up at 12. So if I'm using sodium ion and it's down at 8, I'm going to have to do a boost first up to a standard voltage for the shed, which might be, say, 24 volts. And then the 8 to 16 volts of sodium ion won't be a problem and have all of these things, say, running at 24 volts, which can't do with these. Yeah, what do you think? Should I go for these or stick to the old LED strips? That's it for now. Cheerio.